everybody this is the shy genealogist and today I would just want to do a quick video showing you how to add a background image to an Excel file it seems like it would be a pretty simple thing to do but there are a couple of tricks involved that I want to show you so I do have a blank five generation chart available for you to download if you'd like in my downloads tab but you might already have one that you've used already one thing that I have changed for my five generation chart compared to a lot of traditional five generation charts is that I've added a place to indicate any military information for male ancestors so that I can keep track who was in the Civil War and which unit they were in and things like that. For me to have that military information there, I had to move the marriage information down to the female ancestors. So that might be something that you want to change back to a more traditional approach if that's what you would prefer. You should also realize that right here for the, uh, the base person in this five generation chart, right now it says military and you might want to change that to marriage date if you're, uh, if you're going to begin with a female for your five generation chart. Now to make this five generation chart fit on one sheet of paper, I've had to make some uh, changes to the margin. So you might just want to double check by coming to the page layout and clicking on the margins button. Come down to custom margins and these should all be set to zero. That means that it's going to use as much of the paper as it can. And I also tell it to center it horizontally and vertically just to help it have a more pleasing appearance and to make it easier if I wanted to frame it, for example. If you click on the print preview button, it should show you exactly how it's going to look when it's printed out. And you just might want to make sure that this final little dyed cell is still on your page and hasn't slipped down to a second page. If you would like to see the grid lines, which you would normally see in an Excel file, that's also available here in the page layout. Simply click on that you want to view the grid lines. If you want to print them, you would click here. In our case, we're not going to print them and I even prefer not to see them while I'm working. I like to see my entire five generation chart on one screen, so to do that, I'd like to get rid of all this ribbon up here because it takes up so much space on the screen. If I click the up arrow, that's going to go away. And then anytime I click on a tab, these options will become available again. And if I decide I wanted to keep them visible, I would click that little pin and they would stay visible once again. But for now, I'm going to move them out of the way, give us as much room as we can. And I'm going to reduce this size down to about 60% so that I can see the entire thing on one screen. I can't necessarily read the words, but right now I'm just worried about my layout. If I want to include a background image on here, it seems like the easy way would be to click Page Layout and Background. And then you'll have to find the image that you want to include. You can see that it adds it automatically, but there's no control over it. I can't decide how large it's going to be, and it's going to tile it over and over and over. Obviously, you can see here the picture is being cut off. Here's the border of my page. I can't make it any smaller to make it fit, and if I ask it to print, it's not even going to print that background image. So it's just there for you to see while you're in the program. We need another way of of getting a background image in there. So I'm going to remove that. We're going to add an image using a shape. So if I come to the insert tab, I'm going to tell it that I'm going to insert a shape and I'm going to insert a rectangle. Now I can make this rectangle any size. So if I just wanted some pretty image up here in the corner, maybe a title of some kind, I could do that. If I wanted a border of some kind, maybe some pretty ivy or something, I could do that. Just know that whatever size rectangle you put on here, the image that you choose will be put into that shape. And it might be squished, it might be stretched, you have no control over it other than the size of the rectangle that you put in. So I'm going to include a rectangle that's going to fill the page. I want it to be full size 
I might even go just a little bit over the edges because I want to make sure to get as much of the image as I can. Now this rectangle obviously is not what I want. I want to turn it into an image. So I'm going to right click and tell it to format shape. And depending on the version of Excel that you have, uh, it might pop up with a box in the center instead of this menu over on the side, but you should be able to find the same commands here. If you need to, you would click on this uh, little paint bucket and then we're going to change the fill to be a picture. And it automatically jumps to what you know it thinks you might like to have in here, but we're going to insert a picture from the file within our computer. So when I click on the file, I'll find the image that I want to put and then I'm going to manipulate it just to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. Now obviously this is covering up all of the text from our five generation chart and to get around that we're going to make it transparent. So right here is an option for transparency and we can use a slider. And here's where you kind of need to think about the image that you're using. If it's uh, got a lot of contrast to it, you might find that some areas where you've got typing are maybe too faded uh, to read through this transparent image because the image is laying on top. So you might have to play around with that a little bit. You might decide to change the colors of your uh, text. But overall, you should be able to find a transparency level that's going to work. So think about the different kinds of images you could put behind. It might be the home where the person grew up. It might be an old family photo of some kind, but whatever size you make this rectangle, it's going to force that picture into that shape. So you wanna try to find a picture that's got the same basic proportions as what you're wanting to print out. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that if I decide, oh, I've got an error in here, or as you can see on my example, I haven't even gotten any information into this 5Gen chart. There's no way for me to click on these words. So you either need to make sure that your Gen chart is totally complete before you put the image in last, or you can come to the Home tab. Down here at the very end, it says Find and Select, and you can open the Selection pane and it will have a list of any images that you've put on here. Now you might decide to put, if you happen to have images of all the people in the Vive Gen chart, then you could put little images next to their names and that would be great. That would give you a nice long list of images and you can rename them if you do have multiple images by double clicking and then renaming it. But I still can't type anything over here, so if I close this eyeball, if I click on that icon, the image is going to disappear, and now I can click in the cells and make my changes. Maybe I've decided to change a color because it's gonna show up a little better with the image that I've chosen, or maybe I want everything to be bold, or I want it more calligraphy looking, but I can make all my changes now, and when I'm done, I turn the eyeball back on, and now you can see exactly what you're going to get. Now if I hit Control P to print, I'll get a preview and I can see exactly what this is gonna look like. It's nice and centered, which makes it great for framing or for putting into the front of a book that you might be writing about your family. Now it would be nice to have a title and we could go back and merge some cells together here and put a title over here or maybe we want a title in the top at the middle. So I can come back and I can insert a header. Now again, yours might look different, but you should have uh, the same basic commands available to you. I'm gonna make a custom header and they divide it into three sections. If I want something to show up over here, I can use the left section. Obviously I can center something. For this application, right section probably would not work, but maybe you're not doing a five gen chart and you want something over there on the right. I can put whatever I'd like here. And I've got all of the tools up here that I want to do my formatting. So this letter A is going to allow me to change the font 
decide that I want it bold and italicized. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger. I can do all that. All the, all the same tools that we have for formatting text that are typically in the Home tab are available to us here. So I'm going to tell it OK. And now I can do a print preview and it shows me exactly where it's going to be. Well, since I have such uh, narrow margins, this particular header is pretty close to the top. So I can also do some adjustings here in the Custom Margins button. I click on that. And this is where we had originally set everything to zero, but maybe I want my header to be down a little bit farther. 0.25, I can say OK and get a quick preview. And I like how that's laid out, so I could go ahead and print this thing and it would be ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see some of the things that you come up with using this background image idea. Feel free to post your comments and your images uh, in the comments section of my blog. Thanks for watching.